أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء نبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بلاته إلى يوم الدين ما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا صدق الله العظيم My dear respected listeners, once again, it is Paragon Foundation that is coming your way with a very important series of lectures, Marriage Academy. And inshallah, within some few weeks, we shall periodically and weekly come your way with uh, different topics under Marriage Academy. This week and the subsequent weeks, we are going to have a look at the alphabets of marriage. Linguistically, when we have a look at marriage, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, marriage is actually a legal and a socially sanctioned union. So borrowing the exact words over there, Encyclopedia Britannica says that marriage is a legally and socially sanctioned union usually between a man and a woman that is regulated by laws, rules, and customs, beliefs, and attitude. The only word we would want to remove from this particular definition is the usually. Usually. I mean, it's not usually between a man and a woman. It's directly between a man and a woman from the perspective of uh, Islam. The legally, the divine, and the socially sanctioned union between a man and a woman from the Islamic point of view is marriage. Now, according to Dr. Shahzad Iqbal, a broad perspective of looking at what marriage is is actually whatever permit the divine contract that permit cohabitation of non-maharams is what we call marriage. That is people who are coming from different families or within the extended family that legally in Islam they can marry each other under normal circumstance they cannot come and live or sit or interact with each other in a private area they can do that one but the divine contract the legal and social contract that can bring them to cohabit to live together or to have private interaction without anybody looking at them and for them to support each other to for them to benefit any type of benefit emotional physical sexual any way at all from each other that particular contract that sanctioned this cohabitation of non maharams is what we call marriage but then from the sharia point of view According to Professor Wahbi Zuhaili, he says that marriage is actually a contract, a divine contract that permits non-maharam male and female to touch each other and permits them to kiss each other and permits them to also have sex with each other and then they also permit them to generally support each other, help each other, benefit from each other within some specified rules and regulation in the Quran and Sunnah. This is what we will call marriage technically in Islam. If we want our societies to actually develop and have no psychological challenges and problems and then also nature peace 
and tranquility within our society, then definitely we need to pay heed to this particular institution, divine institution, which is the family institution, and the process that leads to that one, which is marriage. But unfortunately, we look at our educational system, we look at our academic calendar and curriculum. Many of us, we go through the educational system and all the levels of degrees that we need in the educational system and we are not being taught about what family management is and what marriage is those who learn about it in psychology and also in sociology it just to let them earn is to let them earn their certificate but not to equip them with the requisite skills and then also the requisite uh, attribute or attitude and habit and characters that they need in order to build this particular very important unit of our society. So therefore, Paragon taught it that definitely we need to take it upon ourselves, just like the way in other uh, societies, in other communities. It is individual institutions, but not the government or not the educational, the national educational system that takes care of this one. So Paragon Foundation, we want to take care of this one, take it and give series of lectures concerning this one. The second thing is also that even within our legal system, you realize that in certain institutions and professions, we have regulatory bodies enacted by the country itself to manage that particular profession or that particular sector. In the legal sector, we have their own regulatory bodies. And then you come to the medical system, we have their own regulatory bodies. And then you come to, you know, uh, pharmaceutical. So many of the sectors, we have regulatory bodies that is actually taking care of them. But when you look at this particular sector, the family as a unit, the regulatory body that actually would take care of that one, all the ministries and then the institution or the regulatory bodies that are supposed to take care of that number one in terms of training the individuals that will come to marry they are very weak and in terms of ensuring that those who are even marrying and then the the the, the, the conditions under which they are going to marry is suitable for the production of the product that is an outcome of that particular marriage that is a child no institution or no regulatory body pays attention real parents we might have them on papers but the reality is that and practically so many of us will marry and then the government is not even aware that we have married we will set up our homes to give birth to children and the government is not even aware of the how and the, the way we give birth to those particular children and whatever we are do whether we have the requisite skills and the requisite knowledge and then the, the, the competence of taking care of the child, nobody is aware of that one and nobody is taking care of that. So it makes it very important for institutions like Paragon Foundation to take it up upon itself, to guide whoever wish to be guided on this particular note. Then also the third thing is that you realize that in the olden days, in our culture, in the Ghanaian culture, the family or the core of a family actually is closer to the extended what? family you see a father will take care of his son you grow and you marry and your house is very closer to your father's house or your parents house or you even stay within the same house so therefore you get some kind of parental guidance even in the first years of what your marriage sometimes throughout your marriage you get your parents guiding you until they also leave this way if you have any challenges or any problem in your marriage you realize that your parents are those who will guide you to solve that problem sometimes if you the male even make a mistake it is your parents who will draw you and then ensure that they make you come to the right path they will draw you to the right path and discipline you your parents will do that one but these days, because of our professions and then uh, uh, because of globalization, we feel that we need to stay far away from our parents. Our parents should not interfere in our marriage. So we truncate or we cut completely and throw away the parental guidelines and guidance that we could have received from our parents. We don't even want it. We want to stay privately and have our freedom and independence from our parents. 
so that we live any life at all. So if a mistake or a problem gets started within the family, you have no any elderly person to come in and even stop it before it gets exploded. So it's a challenge. And for that matter, we think that once we are aiming at being independent, in the name of romance and in the name of enjoying our lives and maybe in the name of profession that will take us far away from our parents then we need the requisite knowledge and talent and competence to be able to handle the family and more especially once we are not being taught in the university how to do that then we need to be taught we need to learn much about that one so that's the third reason why paragon thinks that we should do this particular program then also we realize that when it comes to marriage all of us would struggle and read one or two books concerning marriage before marriage. But in terms of planning itself, both families, from the bride and the groom, most of the time our planning is mostly on the wedding. We focus on the wedding. What are the material things that we need for what the wedding? Very few families will sit down and analyze, do character analysis, trait analysis of the bride and the groom. See what the bride has and the groom is not having and see what the groom has and the bride is not having and then see some of the habits or some of the characters that can conflict with each other and get the two sides well educated and well prepared as to how to manage some of these characters as to how to adopt or how to adapt to some of those characters but unfortunately we don't plan we only plan and focus for what the wedding all the materials that we need for the wedding is what we are focusing on at the expense of planning and preparing the bride and the groom the female and the male husband and wife preparing them giving them the requisite knowledge and skills that they lack and competence that they like and then enlightening them raising their awareness about some of the weaknesses of both sides and then also teaching them or guiding them as to how to cope up with certain things you realize that we are weak our planning is always focused on what the wedding as a result of that one, consequently, we realize that because our planning is focused on the wedding, what we could have gathered and saved and given to this new family as even capital, we spend everything on the wedding. Making the wedding devoid of divine mercy and guidance from Allah, Azzawajal. If you have a lot to spend, why not give it to the needy in order to attract blessings for the family that you are going to build for your child? Think about the youth who are actually craving to marry. They are craving to marry. They've seen so many things on the internet. So they want to marry. Why not cut it into what two and use the second one, the 50% of it, and help another couple? Two people who want to marry, help them to marry. You establish a certificate jaria for yourself. A source of reward that will never cut. You have set a family, so they will also start their family and throughout whatever they will get or whatever will come out of that one that is positive, Allah is going to write it for you. If you overspend, then remember that Allah Azza wa Jal is warning you in Surah Al-Araf. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in Surah Al-Araf, Ya Bani Adam Khuzu. Ya Bani Adam Khuzu zinatakum inda kulli masjidin wa kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu innahu la yuhibbul musrifin. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-A'raf is guiding us as human beings where we have to even dress, where we have to consciously make effort that the level of cleanliness of our clothes and the beauty of our clothes should be at the highest level. Our worship places, anytime we are going there, we need to dress nicely. We should be careful of extravagance. We should be careful of extravagance. You just want to show that, yes, this is the wedding of my daughter. This is the wedding of my son. So you eat and you drink and then you taste extravagantly. You throw them extravagantly. You don't need that one. But you do that one, but Allah is warning you. 
Allah is one you that in Nabu that he Allah Azza wa Jal La Yuhibbul Musrifin among the things or the people, the categories of people Allah doesn't like at all are those who are extravagant. Why attract the anger of Allah at the beginning, the foundation of your family? The first day that you are going to build your family, you are attracting the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why change the number of dresses? Come and sit down, the bride and groom, you change. You get up, go, come back. And first of all, the display of the beauty of your wife or the display of the beauty of the woman completely haram in Islam. You are displaying her beauty for who to see. That beauty is for the husband alone. That beauty of your wife is for the husband alone. She comes out, she is not even covered. The face is not covered to reserve that beauty for the... Let's assume that your good intention is that she should come and listen to preaching. She should come and listen to advice. So you've brought her, that her beauty you haven't covered her face. Where's to that one too? Where's to that one? You are not covering the face. You are opening the face, then you make makeup again. Artificial beauty, you add, where are we going as Muslims? Where are we going? And where's to that one? She comes to sit, that, sit down, and after five minutes, she has to get up and go inside with the husband, go and change and come back. In Allah doesn't like those who are extravagant. Wallahi, this is extravagance. The shyness that is supposed to be nurtured in her, that first day you are breaking the shyness. That's one. Number two, that beauty that she was supposed to reserve and preserve it for the husband, that first day you are showcasing it for everybody to see. Allah doesn't like those who will cut and move beyond the boundaries. Ya ayuha ladina amanu la tuharrimu. Ya ayuha ladina amanu la tuharrimu tayyibati ma ahallallahu lakum. لا تحرموا طيبات ما أحل الله لكم ولا تعتدوا إن الله لا يحب المعتدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا أو you those who believe لا تحرموا you don't have to prohibit the Malams won't do that they won't prohibit for you ما أحل الله لكم what Allah has made halal for you Allah has made halal for you to enjoy yourself as a family and invite other people to come and feast with you. The modality of that one too is being prescribed by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Female, all females, one group. Male, all male, one group. Nobody sees what the other. Sometimes those who are even so good will organize it separately, but will still take pictures and videos to show on social media what is the essence of doing it separately. What is the essence of eating and drinking and getting enjoying yourself separately and then also putting it on social media for what? Where's to that one to what is prohibited? The dancing. You dance together, you take it and you put it on social media again. So Allah says that our ulemas, our scholars should not prohibit you. But when you are also embarking on that one, Allah says that don't go, don't cross boundaries. Don't cross in the name of the fact that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that give walima. I mean, provide food and invite people to eat and witness to the fact that you have what? Married. In the name of that one, we cross boundaries. By bringing the wife there to showcase to everybody how beautiful she is. Then also bringing music, letting them dance. If you are very shy and you have that sense of shyness in you, you can't dance. It is without shyness that we get up and dance. So that particular sense of shyness is broken away. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us our sins. Then Allah warns us that in Allah, definitely Allah Azza wa Jal, La yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't like the transgressors. Those who will cross boundary. I have given you the permission to do this. Then you cross that one and do other things in addition. These two states that push us into the anger, that attracts the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal, is clearly being seen in our weddings. It's clearly being seen. My dear newly 
wedded couples or yet to get your wedding done please be careful about this one don't attract the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal in the first days of your union your union needs the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal it needs the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal why do something that will attract the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal in those first days dancing singing and then showing the beauty of your wife doing so many unnecessary things extravagant spending marriage that you could have used let's say ten thousand to organize you use hundred thousand ghana cd to organize show that your generosity by first of all marrying for your child this week with ten thousand and organizing another marriage next week use the remaining ninety thousand to organize another nine or ten marriages next week to show appreciation to allah azawajal and see what will happen in the life of your children see what will happen in the life of your grandchildren that will be produced by your child that you marry we shouldn't spend the money like that. The money being given to us is an amana. Definitely, thummalatus alunna yawma idhin anil naim. In our next episode, inshallah, we shall have a look at some of the reasons from the perspective of the sunnah and the Quran why we should marry. The significance this time, not from the social point of view, but from the religious or from the sunnah point of view in our next episode. That is what we will have a look at. Till then, we say, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.